Tackle Warehouse Pro Martin in this back at Lake X. And you can see I'm cranking riprap. And the key to cranking riprap is making sure that that crankbait is bouncing and deflecting off the bottom, creating those deflections and having those fish react to your presentation. I've got a 1.5 deep, but it's a relative unknown little crankbait that does really well because of the shape of the bill when dealing with all these cracks in the rocks and the deflecting capabilities. Same body style as a 1.5, the square bill, but this change in bill shape makes it a great bait for cranking rock, riprap, gravel, things like that, but making that deflection is the key. There's one. Oh, what do we got going here? He's pulling hard, I know that. I think I've got him foul hooked or what? This is a 1.5 deep. I oh, got him right on the side of the face plate. That's why he's pulling so hard. Yeah, I got him, got him by the gill plate, that's why. One, two, three, get up in here. He just came right up there and nipped it and then turned and I got him with the extra hook. This is a cool little old bait. See that square bill on there? On the front of that deep diving bill, it causes an erratic action and it bounces. It bounces off the cover really well. That one, I barely ticked a rock and he was right behind it. Anytime you're winding a plug of any style, size, depth, whether it's a 1.5 or a 10XD, when you get it on the bottom and cause that deflection, that's the whole key that makes that bait do something erratic, causes that fish to strike. So choose a bait that you can get to the bottom. Whether you're in six feet of water, choose an eight foot diver. If you're in 10 feet of water, choose a 12 foot diver and so on so that you can ensure constant contact with that bottom, making that plug do those erratic moves. There's a bike. Way out there on the end of the cast. As soon as it ticked the rocks when I got the bike. Big glass rod doing its job. Mm, stay down. Ah. He ate it. I mean, he's got it. Come on up here. Nice bass. You can see how he came up behind it and just engulfed it. As soon as that bait, first time it ticked a rock, he had it. First rock tick. Now this glass rod is really instrumental when cranking a crankbait for one thing, allowing that fish to get the whole bait before I feel it. One of the key things about this glass rod is as we become better anglers, as we become in more in tune to what that bait is doing, I need a rod that doesn't transmit the feel to me quick so that I take it away. By not feeling that fish for that split second, that allows that bass to get the whole bait, a better hook, and a higher landing percentage. Then the parabolic action, the rod comes in aiding me on coming back to the boat, getting that fish in here without losing him on treble hooks. There we go. As soon as it hit that rock, another one ate it. I didn't, this is weird feeling. Very strange feeling. Oh. Oh, here he comes, here he comes. Yeah, he's wearing it right under his chin. He ran over the top of it too. See how he's hooked funny. Right under the chin. It's a good fish though. Hit that rock, clicked it again, and there we go. All right, one, two, three, get up here. There we go. Well, he may have hit it and the front hook came out or but he got hooked under that chin. That part I can't guarantee. Get this old boat off these rocks. I don't want to catch another one up through here. 
Good chunky little old fella. Good chunk. Start and stop. I tell you what, I sure like it when they bite a crankbait like that. Deflection is the key. So even if you can't hit the bottom, you're on a bluff wall or verticality such that you can't get the crankbait to the bottom, change your speed of your retrieve. Start it up, stop it. Don't get locked in in making the same cast every time. Make sure you're making that bait do something erratic. Stop it, twitch it, move it, speed it up, slow it down through every retrieve so that when you do get a bite, it will give you the clue on what to continue to do to make more fish strike. So don't get locked in on a simple cast and retrieve like that one. I stopped that one and he ate it. Ay, 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 ay. That one hit it on the dead pause. And I mean, does he have it or what? You can't even see that bait. The bait's all the way down in his mouth. Look at there. See how he got that bait? He ran over the top of it when I stopped it. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's a big guy. Mm -hmm. There we go. Burying that retrieve. One of the big keys to getting a bass to bite a crankbait. I mean, when I stopped it, he got it all the way to the Grand Canyon of that mouth. I mean, he got the whole plug when I got it. Just stop and start, stop and start. There we go, there's one. I don't know what I've got here. It's a big one or? It feels like it's a big boil right there. Oh, he has a nice bass, look at that. Yeah, that's a nice bass. Nice fish. Now, what I just did was I punched my button and used my thumb as a drag right there when I saw that fish come up. My reel is disengaged right now, but my thumb is on there in case he makes a hard run. So I don't bend hooks or pull hooks. It gives me just a little more security, even with this. I still have the reel in, disengaged, but I've got my thumb on the spool. Can take up a little line and use my thumb bend. See there? I don't have him hooked well. I don't have him hooked well. Awful good fish right there. Awful good. Still pulling. All right, come back to me, buddy. Come back to me. Come back to me. Come back. I want you to get out of the water. See, oh, this is gonna be ugly. Now I got him. Now I got him. How about that? Good fish. He was hooked a little better than I thought he was, but not real good. Wow, that is a crankbait special right there. Stern wind has got these fish fired up on the, there we go, I got it. Fired up on this windy bank. Now that is a full grown thick mile. Look how thick that fish is all the way down through. Quality, quality bass. This is one of my favorite cranking combinations. This is a seven foot David Fritz perfect cranking in a medium action moderate, which means I've got a pure parabolic bend in it. I pair it with a BB1, 5.1-1 gear ratio, 12 pound Seaguar Invis X. The BB1 allows me to make long casts. The lighter 12 pound line gets the bait down to its maximum depth. And then the rod does all the work once I get a fish on. There's one. hit the rock and here we go. Oh, that's a nice bass. Nice bass. Oh, that is a nice fish. Big head shakes. You like it when it's got a big head shake. Uh-huh. That's the kind you like to catch right there. Big long rod doing its deal. Now we'll reach down here and see if we can't get him. He came down on it. There we go. There we go now. Let's see how we're gonna grab it. 
just like that. He came, you can see he came down on top of the plug. Got one hook on one side, one hook on the other side. That's how you want them all hooked. Got him, come out of there. There we go. Uh -huh, 1.5 deep. That's a good fish right there. I mean a good one. Big old long bottle right there. Man, what a good fish that was. All right, dude, see ya. Go on with your big self. Just by making sure that I'm making contact with the bottom, getting the deflection, gets you those key bites with a crankbait. Be sure to like, share, and tag a friend and get all of this gear that you see right here at Tackle Warehouse.